Hey everybody, this is Andy with Low Lead Virtual, and today we're going to be going over an initial run through of Reality Field. Reality Field is our virtual production system software, and it's designed to make things easier from a camera setup perspective. So it ties into multiple different cameras, tracking systems, lens data systems, and outputs, and it allows you to mix and match data and basically get the camera set up and calibrated within just a matter of minutes. So this is the splash screen, and there are certain tracking systems, for example, anti-latency or Vive trackers that you need to manually enable because if you don't and the uh, corresponded host software isn't running, it'll just crash. So that's something you need to be aware of. Um, the difference between SteamVR and Vive trackers, SteamVR allows you to use controllers and also a headset inside of Reality Field, but the problem is that that limits your data input with those to the refresh rate of your headset's display, which is probably 90 hertz. So it's not ideal, and if you're only using Vive trackers, then we recommend just using this. Okay, and here we are in Reality Field. Now, the interface is purposefully kept quite straightforward, and uh, the entire thing is centered around this 3D viewport. And so you can click and drag in the 3D viewport and you can use the mouse wheel to scroll in and out. And you can use the middle mouse to pan around. And this just allows you to uh, view your trackers in your scene. Uh, we'll go over that in a second. So we're just gonna go through all the menus here uh, from kind of clockwise, starting over here. The output menu allows you to control uh, your uh, output rate. So it's default set to 300, which seems pretty good in most cases. It does allow you to go up to a thousand, which is, quite overkill, but we can, so why not? Um, um, you can also output to multiple formats, and it's important to note that all of these formats are all, all output to simultaneously, and all trackers are output to all formats always. So you don't have to specify like, oh, I want this tracker to output in this format and whatever. It just always works behind the scenes um, no matter what, so you don't really have to worry about that. Lonet up here is Lonet 2, which is, has a default multicast IP and port, and that's just there for reference, basically. Uh, you can't change that. We also support free D output, and this is a feature of the Cine module, so you can specify, um, you know, uh, something like this, I think this is my local IP. So I'll specify uh, this random IP address, and now we're outputting on there, and we can also remove IP addresses here. Um, you can see here that sometimes there are these question marks and that is just further detail for that thing. Um, and we also output to OSC, it works the same way. Um, here you can see the format for the OSC output and this is also on our website. Um, between these three uh, formats, we found that pretty much you're covered. You have access with these formats to Unreal, to Unity through OSC, to Disguise, uh, through 3D or OSC, through Aximetry, um, pretty much any system that you might want to output to, you have an option for here. So now we'll move over to the sync uh, panel here. So sync allows you to frame synchronize the output to a time code source. So here we can specify the time rate, default is 24, you can set it to 30, wherever you want. And then you can choose between either a Blackmagic deck link input, an LTC input, or an OptiTrack eSync um, to actually synchronize the data to. So with a deck link, um, if you have this enabled, you'll see all the inputs available. LTC is just audio, so you can uh, get a cable to plug a standard timecode box into an audio jack. And then the uh, OptiTrack eSync is set in the data input. As long as you're connected to an OptiTrack server, it will automatically push pull that data down. Um, you'll know that it's working because the timecode will change here. And the way that it works is Reality Field is constantly listening for the data on separate threads. So the data is coming in asynchronously no matter what at full speed. So it's constantly checking for new time code. And whenever a new time code is uh, found, it will send out the latest update for all the trackers uh, at that and attach that time code to it. So this is useful for example, the Unreal uh, Time Data Monitor. You can attach the time code and it allows you to give a reference point to uh, you know, synchronize, slow down or speed up the data to get everything in sync with a camera feed or you know whatever. Um, it's, it's a nice feature to have. It's not always necessary, but it is uh, it does it can certainly make life easier. Also in here is the data log and you can uh, specify a location and toggle recording here. And this allows you to record raw Lonet 2 data to a file. And it's just a JSON file and the JSON format is available. 
And this is nice uh, if you want to send something off to VFX or if you want something as a reference in editing later on. Uh, you might be wondering why this is under sync instead of output. And the reason is because uh, when you are logging this, it attaches the time code to the particular JSON object that is associated with that frame. And so that's how you can kind of tie it back to actual camera footage. This isn't really useful without that. Um, you have no way of knowing where the data is actually supposed to go. Um, tracker data menu is empty right now because we have no trackers. So what I'm going to do is go into tracker inputs here. I'm just going to click on add dummy tracker. And that adds this uh, just empty tracker here that we can use for testing and just as a generic data container. You'll see that the uh, tracker exists in 3D space. And you'll also see that my uh, I have a little line attaching the um, cursor to the tracker. And that's just because if it's off screen, you know, sometimes you get a, you know, situations with the trackers like off screen or behind a menu. You try and find it. Sometimes it, be, it could be difficult. So the line just helps you out there. So I'm going to click on the tracker here um, just in the 3D view. And now we have our tracker data menu. So right at the top here, we see the zero button. And uh, if I click that, due to the way the dummy's set up, you're not going to see anything. But normally, this would snap to zero. And the zero button is a pretty integral part to the workflow in Reality Field. It's the thing that untwists the tracker and compensates for any error in the mounting, for example, um, of the tracking system versus the camera. And it also is the thing that allows you to synchronize multiple tracking systems together. So that's something that's important to realize about Reality Field is that all of the trackers are coming in and are being conformed to the common axis coordinate system of Reality Field, which means that you can go in here and you can tweak things and then you can save a preset and then you can load that preset onto another tracking system and it will still work as long as everything is zeroed out. Um, it's a, it's a, we're going to have a full video going over kind of a full stage setup process and you'll see how that works. On the tracker fuller offset here, this is just another thing. So when you're setting up a stage, it's just another piece of information. You need to know how far off the tracker is from the floor, because obviously when you zero it, it's going to be at zero, which in most people's case is on the floor. Um, and you can't usually get the tracker on the floor because it's on a camera. So this allows you to compensate for that. The free DID is what we saw over here. Um, when you're outputting to free D, the free D has an ID system. Uh, so you can output to say, you know, a multicast address. Um, and receive the same data on multiple machines, and then you can parse out individual cameras using the free DID. Pause tracking, obviously just pauses the tracking. Axis mapping, this is where you can go in and you can change you know, how your uh, positional and rotational axes are mapped for a particular um, setup. Uh, these checkboxes allow you to invert the positional or rotational axes, and then the scale is the positional unit scale. Filter, this is a Kalman filter. So this is uh, just able to smooth out some of the highest frequencies here. Um, useful for say Vive trackers to get rid of a, kind of the worst jitter. The next dropdown here is the camera dropdown. So this is what allows you to uh, specify which camera in terms of settings that you want to attach to it, as well as where your focus iris and zoom lens data, if you have any are coming from. And this is all automatically populated. So the beautiful thing about Reality Field is it knows what a camera is. It knows what a lens value is and where those data, where that data can come from. And so it just automatically populates it for you. So if you connect an ARRI camera through UMC, through CAP, it will pull that data out and it will make available that ARRI camera in camera focus iris and zoom because it's capable of providing those things. But you know, subsequently, if you have say a free D input, well, free D provides positional tracking, but it can also provide lens data. And so you can get into, um, and so you could potentially do a thing where you have a free D tracking system, you pull the lens data from the free D system, tie in the camera data from the ARI system, and now within just a few clicks, you've kind of set everything up. You've tied everything together. There's no nodes, there's no scripting, there's no you know multiplication of values. It's just all working. Um, so that's really the beauty of Reality Field is that ease of setup and tying the data where it needs to go. Um, because it intelligently knows what the data that you're dealing with is. And then finally, we have the save and load settings. Um, and, and then finally, we have the save and load settings uh, panel here. So we, once, we, once we're happy with a setup, we can save that. And then we can also load it up at a later date. And again, these values uh, carry over between systems. So I could do a test at home, for example, with a Vive tracker. And then I could save that, bring that to work, where maybe there's a a 3D outputting tracking system. I could just load that up and it will all work. 
There's another tab here called values, and this is where you can actually see all of your uh, camera values, and you can um, either see them or modify them if they're not tied to anything. So for example, you'll be able to see your position, you can adjust your zero here and just tweak that. Um, you can manually specify lens data as well as camera data. And this is also where you can register uh, your Pixera camera. So if you're using Pixera, you can name the uh, a studio camera in Pixera after the name of the tracker in reality field. So it'd be dummy in this case. You hit register and then it will tie those two things together. Um, and uh, it's just a nice sort of um, down here. Um, we have the tracker inputs panel and you already saw the add dummy tracker button. But we also can specify various other uh, systems here. We have retracker, OptiTrack, Qual Assist, a few others as well. Um, we also, again, not listed here, have anti-latency support as well as, uh, of course, uh, Steam VR support. And uh, some of these are, so for example, the OptiTrack will automatically detect the um, any any NatNet servers that are running on the network. Some of these, like Retracker, only need the port. And some of these, like Qualysys, need the full IP address and port. So that's all reflected accordingly. And then if you have the Cine module, you can also specify uh, which port you want to receive free D data on. You can adjust it here if you want to change the scale or if, if the rotation is coming as radians. 3D is one of those, it's used as kind of a generic data protocol for a lot of uh, vendors. They don't necessarily adhere to one common spec. So you can scale things accordingly um, and just make sure that it's all conformed correctly. One last little tip here, if I press, uh, if I have a tracker selected, I could press H to hide it and then I could press S to show it. And that's useful if you're trying to select two trackers that are you know right next to each other. Sometimes it's difficult. so. You can do that there. Um, the cameras tab here, uh, you can go through and you can see we support everything from Airy cameras directly, uh, Sony Venice cameras, uh, Red RCP2 cameras, which this would be the Komodo and the V Raptor. Um, and there's also some support for Panasonic PTZ cameras, uh, just because that was easy to implement, although we haven't uh, quite tested that. Um, um, and there's notes again in each, in each of these to show you uh, where in the camera menu to go to set up. And once they're connected, you'll be able to go into the window tab here and go into data, and you'll be able to see all of the data um, that is associated with that. And here you can also see the data for the trackers and you can select trackers by clicking the name of them in this view as well. Um, I like having this, this view up when I'm working, but you can just close it off as well. Um, a couple of the last things that I wanna mention here, if we go up to trackers, we have this option zero all of type from selected. So this is useful. Let's say you have um, a stage set up and you have like three Vive trackers or you know multiple OptiTrack trackers coming in. But you can select one of, well, you can put one of those trackers at the zero point of your stage, hit zero, and then come up here and go zero all of type from selected. And now all of the OptiTrack trackers or all of the Vive trackers will be zeroed to reflect that value. And that's nice because you can zero an entire stage worth, you know, in, you know, 10 cameras all at once by just zeroing one of them. That's just a nice little feature. You can thank uh, Ian Fursa for this suggestion here. And then of course, we also have uh, the ability to report bugs and documentation. There is full documentation on the website. And that is an overview of Reality Field 1.0. If you're excited in checking it out, you can download a free demo at realityfield.xyz. And of course, if you have any suggestions or feedback, you can post it over in our forum or shoot me an email. Thanks.